In relation to your plea of guilty, your counsel, as previously mentioned, did not submit it indicated remorse. Your counsel's circumspection was sensible, given your secrecy regarding how and why you killed your wife, which has compounded the grief of Karen's loved ones. But as the law recognises, your plea of guilty is still deserving of a significant discount for its utilitarian benefits. It has spared family and friends the ordeal of a trial. Witnesses have also been spared the stress of testifying, and the community has been saved the considerable expense of a trial, which was anticipated to run for about five weeks. Whilst the prosecution at first balked at the notion that your plea of guilty should attract a significant discount, it eventually accepted that your entry of a plea of guilty was, quote, no small thing. But of course, you cannot expect the kind of sentencing discount you would have received had you made full and frank disclosure, enabling me to find that you were truly remorseful and doing all that you could to ease the pain of Karen's loved ones. As for your prospects of rehabilitation, I find, on the balance of probabilities, that they are good, given your lack of criminal antecedents and the unchallenged character references. Since I am obliged to have regard to current sentencing practices in sentencing you, I have reviewed a significant number of manslaughter cases. They were of some assistance, but I do not intend here to trawl through the facts and sentences of the cases I have considered. However, I will say this. Many of the domestic violence homicides that I have looked at involve a history of domestic violence, not an isolated outburst of violence. In that regard, your case is atypical. As was conceded by your counsel, the principles of general deterrence, denunciation and just punishment must loom large in sentencing you. Because I find that your prospects of rehabilitation are good, I do not place much weight on specific deterrence or the need to protect the community from you, though specific deterrence has some part to play given the seriousness of your offence, your post-offence conduct and your continuing secrecy. You were originally charged with murder. Ultimately, that charge was downgraded by the prosecution to manslaughter. Accordingly, in sentencing you, I must do so on the basis that when you killed your wife, you did not do so with murderous intent, that is, with an intention to kill or cause really serious injury. Boris Rostevsky, please stand. For the offence of manslaughter, I sentence you to nine years imprisonment. I declare a non-parole period of six years. I declare that you have already served 491 days by way of pre-sentence detention. Pursuant to section 6AAA of the Sentencing Act 1991, I declare that but for your plea of guilty, I would have imposed a sentence of 10 years imprisonment with a non-parole period of seven years. In relation to the forensic sample order sought by the prosecution, namely a saliva sample, I am satisfied that it is appropriate to make such an order given the seriousness of your offence and your consent to the order. Accordingly, I order you to undergo the forensic procedure and inform you that if you do not cooperate in the provision of the saliva sample, a police officer may use reasonable force to enable a blood sample to be taken. <laughs>